after the latest installment of the state capture inquiry report has painted a bleak picture of the governing party and its senior members. The report has found that Bosasa was key in keeping the party in power through kickbacks for government tenders. The report has further fingered a number of senior ANC members who are also in government, such as Gwede Mandashe, Vincent Smith, Nombula Mukonyane, and the party's former president, Jacob Zuma, for having received bribes from Bosasa. The report has further recommended that they be investigated for corruption. Let's take a look at what this means in terms of the governing party's image, but also for governance uh, in this country. We're joined by Dr. Sam Koma, who is a governance expert. Thank you very much for availing yourself this afternoon. I think let's start by acknowledging that the third part of this report has three volumes, so there's quite a lot of reading still to be done. But uh, just from the bits that you were able to chew up, uh, what stood out for you? Oh, yeah. Thanks, Aduru, uh, for having me. Uh, yes, um, what the third installment uh, of the report uh, that specifically uh, inquires into the affairs of Busasa uh, is that it uh, reaffirms the testimony and evidence which was adduced by Mr. Angelo Agrizi. Uh, it is uh, now clear, uh, if you read the report, that the Commission accepts his evidence. O already we knew when he testified before the commission that he implicated a number of uh, high-ranking uh, government officials, including ANC leaders, as you uh, mentioned uh, or specified them, Mr. Zuma, then the president of the ANC, uh, Ms. Nombula Mukonyane, Mr. Mantashe, Mr. Frolik, and also Mr. Tabang Makwetla, amongst others. So uh, uh, that's what uh, it is coming out of this uh, report. But also it uh, confirms a pattern that we have seen before that the ANC one is immensely benefited from uh, Busasa uh, through, of course, uh, getting, uh, obtaining uh, state contracts, which, uh, as we know, uh, mostly came from the Department of Correctional uh, Service. And also the ANC benefited from Busasa through uh, the establishment of the war room, which was its uh, election uh, operational machinery in 2014. So uh, there's no way the ANC will escape uh, scrutiny and accountability uh, this time around, including the implicated uh, politicians drawn from the ranks of the ANC. They are the governing party. Are we seeing good governance here? I ask in relation to the latest African peer review mechanism report, uh, which found a few areas of concern where South Africa uh, is concerned. These include uh, rising inequality and unemployment, corruption, and incidents of xenophobia and poor service delivery. This says we look at the South African Human Rights Commission hearings into the deadly July unrest. Is there governance here? Never mind good governance. Uh, not uh, really. Uh, in fact, we have pointed out uh, one of the uh, evidence uh, coming out of the African Peer Review Mechanism Report and lately the hearings that have been convened by the South African Human Rights Commission. But we also have a couple of those, for example, the Fragile Index Report. We have the Transparency International Index Report that looks into issues of corruption among the different uh, countries. We also have the Auditor General's report. All this Dr. Sam Goma's connection there, um, not uh, quite stable. We do apologize uh, for that as he continues his thought to also reflect on a number of reports that have spoken about the issues of corruption in South Africa. I do believe you are back, Dr. Goma. If you can hear me, please pick up on your thought. Oh, yes. I was saying, uh, in addition to the African peer review me uh, mechanism, we also have a couple of other reports that points to uh, high levels of accountability regressions within the public sector, uh, culture of impunity, lack of consequences, and also serious governance lapses. And all of this points to lack of decisive and ethical political leadership, including administrative leadership that happens to be employed within the state. So all of these uh, issues uh, points to a weakened state capacity that still needs to be uh, built uh, progressively 
uh, through employing different mechanisms and also ensuring that uh, people who are fit uh, uh, for purpose and also are fit and proper are considered for appointment and also uh, consideration for employment in uh, most of the uh, state organs. When comparing apples with apples, especially when we stay within the continent and take a look at the consequence for a lack of good governance, um, what would you say happens when governance fails? Yes, uh, when governance fails, it, it, it means that you'll have uh, people who it's free for all. People can uh, pocket money out of uh, state coffers. Uh, people can do as they wish. There is abuse of authority, uh, abuse of power, which is entrusted on political office bearers and also uh, uh, senior government officials, including low level uh, officials. So as a country, because uh, South Africa, we are a constitutional democracy. We cannot afford to have these high levels of uh, governance lapses and also accountability regressions. So at some point, uh, there should be decisive uh, action that is taken, but also we now uh, rely on criminal justice institution to come on board and action some of the recommendations contained in the Zondo Commission report. Mm. Dr. Sam Goma is a governance expert. Thank you very much for helping us make sense of that development.